family and those who are online we are happy that you have joined us every night you let us know by your numbers that you are in tune with what is happening and we're happy that you're there and we, we want you to stay with us even after this series so we are asking you to make sure that you like that you subscribe and when you like and subscribe make sure that every time you log on you share you share because this gospel of the kingdom must be preached to all the world. And as we learned last night, that this gospel through the medium of the internet is being preached. Amen. And pastor, in addition to the medium of the internet, we know what has been happening under this canvas cathedral. And I'm looking to our left. I'm oh. not sure if my, uh, my online viewers can see, but I want to let you know that the, the pool, the baptismal pool is here. Is here and it is filled with water. That's and right. And when I came this evening, it didn't look so pretty. But uh, I saw someone decorating around it and later on they'll see how it looks. It looks good. It does look good. The plants are absolutely beautiful. But more than that are those jewels that God will have going down in the water and coming up in baptism this evening. You know, there's a group in Jamaica that sings a song, What About the Children? Yeah. And tonight we're going to hear about the battle for the children. That's a, a sermon that I think is going to be uh, straight to the hearts of the children and the parents. Amen. Amen. But God before is we get Go ahead, to that sermon, the team that started in the first week is with us. What's their name again? Osano Praise. They will lead us into a praise and worship right after this prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessings. We thank you, dear Lord, for all of these weeks of wonderful messages that have drawn our hearts and drawn our lives into a deeper and closer relationship with you. We thank you, Lord, for all your, your people who have been here physically and those online. And tonight, one more time, Lord, as we seek to replicate what happens in heaven, as we seek to replicate the praise that happens in heaven, we ask you, dear Father, that you'll accept of our worship. Be with us and our praise as they now lead us into our songs of praise, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good night, everyone. You see, the devil always presents himself when good things are happening. But we're going to say, move, devil. Come on, let me hear you saying it. Move, devil. Move, devil. Yes, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. All hail the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, Lord of Lords. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Let us crown him king. 
Amen. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. God is good. And all the time, has God been good to you today? If God has been good to you today, let me see you lift your hands and say, praise the Lord. God has been good to you. Say, thank you, Jesus. And if you believe that you serve a true and living God that is worthy to be praised, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, my God is good. Oh, we serve a true and living God that is worthy to be praised. And we are happy once again to be worshiping Jesus in spirit and in truth this evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome one and all to the Countdown to the End evangelistic campaign. Indeed, night after night, we have been receiving powerful messages from the servant of God. Do you agree with me? Yeah. And this evening is no different. I'm so happy to share with you that this evening, the topic is the battle for our... I can't hear you. The battle for our... The battle for our children. So I invite for you that as we worship together, that we be drawn closer to Jesus Christ. Those who are online, remember to share the link with a family member. Share the link with a friend as we experience the powerful topic tonight, the battle for our children. And to God be the glory, great things he has indeed done. We will be having a children baptism this evening. What do you say? So we look forward to a wonderful evening in Jesus. Jesus name. At this time, I turn over to Ozana Ministry, who will lead us in our fellowship song at this time. Come on, stand to your feet. We're going to do the fellowship song. Stand to your feet. If we have a visitor here tonight that is coming for the first time, we are going to show them how the countdown team works. Are you ready? Come on, put those hands together. Somebody in Jesus' name, let us tell them that we love them in Jesus' name. Tell them we can work together in Jesus' name. Everybody smile, Jesus loves you. Everybody smile, Jesus loves Let us see the smiles now. Smile, 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 everybody. Smile, 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 
Everybody smile, smile, smile. Everybody smile. I'm not seeing everyone smiling. Smile, smile, smile. Everybody smile, smile, smile. Everybody smile, smile, smile. Everybody smile. smile, smile. Everybody smile. Let us greet. Let us greet somebody in Jesus' name. Let us tell them that we love them in Jesus' name. Tell them we can work together in Jesus' name. Everybody smile, Jesus loves you. Everybody smile, Jesus loves you. Smile, smile, smile. 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 Amen. Somebody give God a hallelujah. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, brethren, I don't know where I would be. If this is your testimony too, come on, give God the highest praise one more time. Hallelujah. Now that's the song I'm going to do for you tonight. It's entitled, If It Had Not Been for the Lord on My Side. Now it's a very short song, you know. Maybe the shortest testimony in song that I will ever do. But it hits the nail on the head. And I know I am not the only one who can testify that God has brought me through some storms. Has God brought anybody through some storms? Come on now, then I need you to sing this very short song with me. Start it from the top for me, please. wonderful message to know that God is on our side and if you believe God is on your side shout glory hallelujah. glory hallelujah and if you really believe that God is on your side say praise the Lord, praise the Lord. because he is on our side 
we can't do anything else but to praise him, to worship him, to pour out everything unto him. And that is why we give of ourselves to, the God, to our Lord and we make sacrifice to him. I want to say thanks to all of you for the generous contribution you have made thus far. Let's give yourselves a big amen. amen. God is faithful. And I want you to let you know that because of his goodness, we are going to say thank you to him again for his mighty acts towards humanity. And so we're going to lift an offering at this time. And as we lift the offering at this time, those online, you can also contribute by filling out the information that you see on the screen. The information is there for you. Go ahead and you can make your offering unto the Lord through online banking. I'm going to invite you to join me as we pray for the offering at this time. Shall we pray? O oh, great eternal God and our Father, you have given unto us life. But more so, we are thankful that you have given unto us life more abundantly. We thank you also for families and for friends. We thank you for also giving unto us food and all the basic necessities of life. And in an act of gratitude, we are saying thank you, God, for what you have done for us. So we say thanks, thanks. We give you thanks for all you have done for us. And so as we give to you this evening, we pray that you bless our offering and bless us as we give is my prayer with thanksgiving in Jesus name. chat is lighting up. Yes. People are saying, I see Sophia saying, thank you, Jesus. I see Richard Brown saying, praise the Lord. I see uh, Cecile Hamilton say, he has answered when I prayed. 
Tonight is Wednesday night. Tonight is prayer tower night. And I do believe that many people, their prayers will be answered. Good evening, everyone, saints and visitors. That is from Burial. I, I see someone is shouting out, thank you, Jesus. Uh, Verna is shouting out, hallelujah, hallelujah. We are praising our Lord this evening. And I want to say thanks to the, the persons who are online this evening watching and making sure that they are not left out. That's right. No night at all. They, they are having their own hallelujah time online. Absolutely. While we are here having our praise the Lord time under the tent, they are having, a, I would say, a catawampus time. While we're having a super califragilisticexpialidocious time <laughs> oh. <laughs> under the tent, they are having a, a grand time, a great time uh, on, online. I love those words that you're using to describe what's happening here, Pastor. And it, brothers and sisters, if you watch the chat every night, you will realize that when we get closer to when the evangelist comes to break the word, the number just swoop. They just move to the top because people are really tuning in, as you said. And yes, they are, are having an absolutely wonderful time. I can't use those words, Pastor, but I'm going to practice. Cat a wampus. <laughs> you want to say it? Cat? Cat? A? A? Wam? Wam? Pus. Pus. Put Give it me a round now. of applause. It's not so bad. Cat a wampus. All right. You want to try the next <laughs> Thank one? Thank you. Super? Super? Kali? Kali? Raji? Raji. Listic. Listic. SP. Oh my goodness. SP. Ali. S Ali. Doshas. Doshas. I'm not even going to try that <laughs> one, Pastor. <laughs> okay, so uh, that, that, that's just to say I'm that we're practice. having a wonderful time in Amen. Jesus. And you know what? I see some excited things happening around the back uh, of the tent. I see children and I see parents bringing their children and smiling. I saw one lady kissed a little girl and I said, do it again. And she did it more than one time. Oh. And she was just saying, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. Tonight is another night. Tonight as we pray, as we pray for the evangelist, as we pray for what has been happening, as we pray for the prayer requests, we have the prayer ministry's leader and the publishing director for the Jamaica Union Conference of Seventh-day Adventists, Dr. Dudley Hossein, who will now lead us into prayer. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Grant. Indeed, God is getting ready to do amazing things. Paul says in Ephesians 3, verse 20, No one to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask, or think according to the power that works in us. This evening, God is about to do something marvelous and miraculous. We want you to embrace Him in a tangible way. Claim His promises. He says in Mark 11, verse 24, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you have them, and you shall receive them. Cry out tonight and say, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief, I pray in Jesus' name. So we're going to engage you in prayerful singing as we engage God in prayer this evening. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. The last Wednesday night and we want the Spirit of God to be poured out in a tangible way. We want every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, everyone we seated here in heavenly places and those who are watching online to experience the power of the Holy Spirit and even the evangelist as he preaches this evening, the last Wednesday evening, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me.
possible a posture of prayer as we pray. Almighty Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for how you brought us here safely this evening. We could have died while we traveled here, but you have seen it fit to spare our lives to see this evening, to be here, to listen to vital words of information and inspiration. We praise your name because we know, as Jeremiah says, it is of the Lord's mercies why we are not consumed. Because his compassion, they fail not. They're new every morning, every evening. Great is thy faithfulness. Because you have been faithful, we too want to be faithful and be grateful to you because you're a good God. So we pause to express our attitude of gratitude like David saying, Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. We praise your name, O oh God, because you have given us salvation through Jesus Christ. We praise your name because you have kept us alive. We praise your name because you're with us. And we know that you're not like Judas that will betray us. You're not like Peter that will deny us or Demas that will forsake us. You are a friend that sticks closer than a brother. So we pray this evening that you'll manifest your presence, manifest your power this evening under this tent cathedral and online. And we know, mighty God, that in your presence there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. So we pray this evening that all those who came uh, with sadness will experience your gladness those who came with sorrow oh god will experience your joy because we know it is hard to come in contact with you and remain the same so we pray uh, that you will touch down in a tangible way and we pray uh, that you will convince and convict us that you're the great god the omnipotent one the one who is greater than the greatest mightier than the mightiest better than the best and we pray that you will supply our needs according to your riches in glory the last wednesday evening the last prayer power our tower we know oh god that you are taking care of business and you're supplying our needs according to your riches in glory we know that you take care of the needy and not necessarily the greedy and we know that as we continue to connect with you you will do amazing things for us because you have said abide in me and i in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abides in the vine no more can you except you abide in me i am the vine you are the branches he that abides in me and i in him the same brings forth much fruit and you have challenged us and you have promised that if you abide in me and my words abide in you whatever you ask it shall be done unto you so god your people have been praying for the past three and a half weeks oh god and they're praying for a breakthrough so we pray today that you will come true for your people in a tangible way bless your people physically take care of the sickness and the suffering and the sorrows take care of the mental challenges almighty oh, heavenly father you know that some people are sad some people feel defeated and even experiencing depression and we pray uh, that you will do something extraordinary and that you will bring happiness and joy because we know that a merry heart does good like medicine but a broken spirit dries up the bones mighty god touch down and heal your people emotionally some people are addicted to all those chemical substances and some people are addicted to other substances we pray mighty god that you will give each one the power to break those chains of addiction and give them the victory help them not to be victims but to be victors through jesus christ we pray mighty god for those who are having spiritual challenges they want to go forward but there's something holding them back but we pray tonight in the name of jesus that you'll break down every idol cast out every foe touch down tonight in a tangible way and we pray that you'll pour your spirit upon these individuals as they cry out to you and ask you 
to fill them with your spirit and we pray that you'll give them the victory because we know that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. So we pray tonight in the name of Jesus that the weapon that is formed against these individuals shall prosper. And we pray that tonight somebody will get the victory. Some man, some woman, some boy, some girl will get the victory and pray that prayer like the songwriter saying all to Jesus. I surrender all to Him. I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily live oh god we pray in the name of jesus that you will bind the devil oh god keep him in check and we pray tonight that your people will get the victory walk to the altar surrender all to jesus and get baptized and we pray oh god that the members in zion were cooling out in comfort corner we pray that they'll experience revival tonight and maintain that revival through the name of Jesus. We pray for your manservant. Dr. Cheyenne O'Connor, oh God, he has been blowing the gospel trumpet for the past three and a half weeks. The devil is upset. He's angry, oh God, but we pray tonight that you'll keep the devil in check and that you will touch your manservant one more time. Fill him with your spirit, oh God. Give him the gift of speaking, teaching, articulating, enunciating. Use him like never before. We pray that he'll cry aloud and spear not that he'll lift up his voice like a trumpet and call sin by his right name. And we pray, oh God, that he will speak the truth as it is in Jesus. And we pray that men, women, boys and girls will, will respond tangibly and surrender all to Jesus. We thank you, O God, for being with us. We thank you for pouring your Spirit upon us. And we pray again, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh upon us in a tangible way. And we pray that all of us will leave here better than we came. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayers, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, and our King. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. The voice of my good friend and colleague, Pastor Dudley Hosing. Good evening, everybody. Oh, you, you, sound, you sound tired. Are you tired? No? Oh, let's try it on. Good evening, everybody. That sounds better. That sounds better. Let me welcome you to our uh, Wednesday evening's edition, the final Wednesday evening, evening for the Countdown to the End campaign. Believe it or not, the time is just running away, running away. Really want to thank all of you for your tremendous support over the last four weeks. The Lord has been blessing us, and we are grateful to have all of you. Uh, every night you've been out here supporting this campaign, and I'm praying that, uh, you know, when the campaign is over, all of us would be on the same side, or our names are written down in glory, and we're ready to go home. Can the church say amen? amen. I want to welcome our first-timers, all those. Anybody here for the first time, first time, first time? Good, some first-timers. Come on, give them a round of applause. Tremendous, tremendous. Good to have you. Welcome to the Countdown to the End campaign, amen. And for those of you watching for the first time online, we don't want to leave you off. We want to welcome you as well. We've got some good news that um, some online folks um, this coming Sabbath, some folks in, in Texas will be baptized as a result of this campaign. Can the church say amen? amen? And then we have some folks in Canada that will be baptized as a result of the campaign. Praise the Lord. And some other folks, other parts of Jamaica. And our final baptism will be on, when, on Sabbath morning right here. This evening is a special baptismal service exclusively for the children, precisely. And so the whole program tonight will be, will be geared around our children. And while I'm, while I'm doing that, I want to welcome some special people. Um, Samantha Smith, Samantha, um, somebody want to say a special welcome to you and your niece. Well, um, we're happy to have you. Samantha, understand, is the manager for Burger King. We are happy to have you in the house here with us this evening. And we pray that God will bless you as you, tremendous, as you wor worship with us here today. 
Okay, also special guest tonight, my very, very special guest tonight, my, my father-in-law is right here. All right, he's all the way up from Manchester to come for this campaign. Come give him a round of applause. Yep, beautiful. Good to have you, Pops. Good to have you with us here, worship with us here this evening. I want to thank all of you who have been um, praying for the preacher. How many of you are praying for the preacher? Boy, I got so many prayers going up for me. Um, and, you know, last night I told you, I think the dust has been trying to take a hold of me. But um, I want to give God thanks for my wife and my mom in the same house. Yes, yes, yes. Working shifts to get the preacher going. Amen. <laughs> amen, amen. And a number of individuals. Boy, I get so many, so many, um, so many suggestions. I get so many suggestions. Some folks brought Vicks. It's a long time I haven't seen Vicks. Some folk brought, brought um, um, what's the name of the tea? Ir Irvine? Burvine. Or Vervine. Vervine? Vervine. Some folks buy <laughs> Vervine. There's so many. I'm telling you, there's so many remedies. You got. <laughs> Man, I want to give God thanks for all the love. Um, that you have given to us, we are the, to me particularly and to my family, we are happy for the support and I, I'm feeling good. Um, I'm hoping and trusting by God's grace and by his mercy that um, we can go on for the rest of this campaign. All right. Okay. I understand my sister-in-law is also here. Marlene, where are you? Um, somewhere at the back. Okay, good, good, good. And of course, I have two good friends that were from the Cayman Islands, brother and sister Palmer, who are here with us as well. We welcome you. Oh, there you go, there you go. Excellent, excellent. All of you, we are delighted to have you, and we hope that you'll be blessed as we worship together here. Okay, I'm going to cut down on a number of my uh, number of talking, but, but tonight is a very special night. It is dedicated to the children. So I have, courtesy of the um, the, the Department of Publishing, I have some gifts for mothers, mothers, I, let, let me see the hand of the lady, the person who has, who have brought the most children with you. These are, I have my friend over there normally help with a number of children from the community, but these are your children at home. Anybody with five children at home? How many children you have at home? Six. Come on up here, man. Come on up here. Come on up here. She has six children at home. Six children. Six children at home. Man. Man. Come on up. Come on up here. Six children at home. That's, a, that's a, quite a lot of cooking. Amen? That's a lot of cooking. So, courtesy of the publishing department, this, this is a, a character building stories for your children, right? Bedtime story for them. Well, man, we're just talking here. <laughs> Tremendous. Give her a round of applause. Nine children she has. All right. Anybody with another body with another five or six? These are your children at home. Five, four. Where? Quickly. Come, 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 come. You have five. Five children. Five children. Are they here tonight, by the way? Come on, come on. You have five children at home. Five children, five children. Give a round of applause. Yes, 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 yes. It's hard to raise up children in these last days. Yep. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. This is for your children. Bedtime stories for them. Amen. Congratulations. Give a round of applause. Anybody pregnant? <laughs> and you're about to have a child? Your first child? Pregnant, you're pregnant? <laughs> Nobody? <laughs> I, I have this gift for the, per, for the lady who is pregnant and having your, your baby soon. Nobody like, oh, you people in Portmore don't get pregnant? No? Okay. Okay. I, um, th this is for the parent, mother or father, for your child. You, you brought your child to the church and they are getting baptized tonight. More than one from your house. Anybody like that? More than one from your house. No? Yes. Yes. Somebody. Yes, 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 yes. Come on. Come on up. Give her a round of applause. Yes. 
Yep, yep, yep. How, how many children getting baptized? Oh, you have one getting baptized, but the other one is here. You qualify. Round of applause for her. Tremendous, tremendous, tremendous. Is there a father, a single father who ha who's living with your children? Yeah? Any single father living with your children? No? Where? Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on up, come on up, man. It's hard to read good bedtime story. Father living with your single children. Beautiful, beautiful. This is for your children, all right? God bless you, God bless you. Okay, okay. Little story. Little story. <laughs> Little story. Okay, good. <laughs> Let me tell you what's going to happen for the rest of this week. We're dealing with this subject tonight, the battle for the children. Tomorrow night, no meeting, but on Friday night, sex, savior, and... Salvation, that's where we'll be cracking this subject open on Friday night. And then on Sabbath morning, oh, uh, I should have changed that for you. When the king comes in, that's our final presentation. I'm going to ask the praise team to join me as we stand, as we sing our theme song. Shall we stand? Holy words, long preserved for a walk in this world. Here is our God's own man. Here we go. Holy word, long preserved for a walk, for a walk in this world. In this world, there is sound. There is sound. God's own heart. With God's own heart, oh let the ancient words depart. Words of life. Words of life. again, you personally, you the God of little children, the lover of little children, we pray, Almighty God, 
that you will pass by here tonight and speak to your people yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. You may be seated. So permit me if I put off preaching for tonight until Friday and use tonight to share with you just to have a family talk again with you concerning our children. Is that all right? Yes. So I don't know if you realize and some people take it lightly. But tonight you'll understand why you should not take it lightly. There is a serious, severe, brutal battle for the children that are in our homes. There is a serious battle for our children. I'm going to put a text on the screen. Help me read Revelation 12:4. What the, what the Bible says. The dragon stood before the woman which was ready to, to be delivered. To do what? I'm not hearing you. To do what? To devour her child. When? As soon as it was born. We already identify this dragon as the, as the, as the enemy. Am I correct? Good. And even though that text is a piece of prophecy that refers to the birth of Christ, it does, has, it does have far-reaching implication because Satan is insisting to capture the mind of every child as soon as it is born. Is the church with me? Yes, 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 God, stay with me. So, so tonight, I'm going to share, share with you why. Why, what's going on? Well, in Genesis 1:28. We look at, we have worked this text so hard. But in Genesis 1, 28, the Bible says, And God, come on, help me. And God blessed them and said, and God said to them, be what? Be fruitful and multiply. Translate that to English for me. Go and have children. How many children? A whole lot of children. You mean that God Want, when God married Adam and Eve, the intention of God was that they should have what? Lots of children. Hang on, hang on, hang on. This is important. That's why God designed. That's why God designed the feminine gender in such a way that she could produce. Is the church with me? Yes. That was deliberately designed. No, men are not designed like that. But no, they're trying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. You remember I asked you the other night, why did God create marriage? Answer, I'm in Malachi 2 verse 14. You were united with, let me read. You were united with your wife by the Lord. And what does he Want why he unite wife and husband? What does God want? Come on, what does God want out of marriage? He wants godly children from your God has a vested interest in our children. Is the church with me? God, yes, children are important. To God. They may not be important to some people who dump them in a rubbish bin or leave them at people's door or walk out of the hospital room and leave them. But everyone that is born here is important to God. Are we together? And they are. So, so, so that you understand, this is how the Bible defines children. If I ask you, what's your definition of children? I don't know what you would say, but this is how the Bible defines children. Here is it. Psalm 127 verse 3. Can we read together? 1, 2, 3. Behold, children are what? Heritage. Ha! 
children are what? Heritage from the Lord. You know what heritage means? Anybody? Something that you will inherit. In other words, another translation puts it another way. Another Bible translation says, Behold, children are a gift from God. Port more. Every child born in this country, whether you wanted them or not, they are what? A gift from God. They're a gift from God. They are God's special gift to you. Are we together? And the text says, they are the property of God that he gives to you. Is the church with me? Yes, they are a heritage of the Lord. Therefore, they must be respected as a gift from God. Can you imagine when we beat them up and kick them down and box them down? How God feels. Can you imagine when we control them as if they are ours? Let me say that. Hey, 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 hey look at me, look at me. Okay, all eyes on me. Let me let, can, I, can I get some permission to talk Jamaican? Yes. The picnic where you have at your yard and of for you. Translate for the people online. The children at home are not yours. They are, they are who? They are gods. God only gives them to you. Hey, 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 you are custodians of God's property. Are you with me? They are a gift from God. Every one of them. Whether they be black or white. All are precious in his sight. They are a gift from God. They must not be abused or refused. Are we together? Yes, yes, yes. Some people are going to run up into God based on how you treat your children. And, and by the way, if you have some children and they are bad, you are not the first. Adam had a son that killed the brother. Are you with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so the Lord has some serious warnings about children, which I don't think Portmore people have read. So let me help you with it. Here's Jesus. Whoever, come on, read this with me. Matthew 18, verse 5. Whoever receives one little child like this one in my name also receives. Woo! Did you get that? Whoever receives one little child like this in my name also receive me. Then can you imagine how many people come at church, reject children, but still come at church? And Jesus says, if you, re if you receive one of these little ones in my name, you have received me. Because I, watch this, watch this. Jesus says, they are just like me. Are we together, brethren? Jesus equates himself to them. So here's the big warning. Here's the big warning. Listen up, listen up, listen up. Here's the big warning. In Matthew 18, verse 6, these words came out of Jesus' mouth concerning the children you have at home. Here's it. Let's read together. But, who, come on, but whosoever causes, keyword here, one of these little ones who believe in me to do what? Whoever caused them to sin. What does that mean? The word cause means force. Enforce them or encourage them. Empower them to sin. Mm. Send them to do what they're not supposed to do. Have them involved in things they're not supposed to be in. Is the church with me? Yes. Whoever caused one of them to sin. Here's, read the rest of the text. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he was drowned in the depth. Is Jesus says so you know? Which means whoever molests one of these 
whoever used them to involve in sinful acts or sinful behavior. Jesus says, you, a better millstone was hung around your neck. This is one of the most serious warnings I've ever seen in the Bible. Is the church with me? Because God takes children seriously. So I'm going to share some stuff with you. And you see why I've decided to use this evening's presentation. I'll leave preaching till Friday to talk about this subject. In the United States of America, one in nine girls and one in 53 boys under the age of 18 experience sexual abuse or sexual assault at the hands of an adult. One in nine girls. The, the, the statistics is staggering. Of all the victims under age 18, Two out of three are, are ages 12 to 17. So this is the age when they are most, they are most likely, most at risk. Yes, under, under the age of 12, 34% of all children who have been sexually molested took place under the age of 12. 66% age 12 to 17. Give you some more statistics and tell you why this is important. Among cases of child sexual abuse reported in law enforcement, here's what happened. Watch this. This is important for you to understand. Stay with me. Stay with me. Because most of you think that when people molest your children, it's strangers who do it. No, 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 no. Why? Because you are not leaving your child with stranger. So stranger don't get the chance. To do it. Is the church with me? Yes. The people who often do it are the people who you trust. 59% of the perpetrators are people who the child is acquainted with. And 34% are family members. Making 93% in total are people who the child is familiar with. Are we together here, brethren? Yes. People living in the same house or, or friends of the family that you trust. So they, you leave your child with the family and go on to market. And by the time you come back, trouble. You have boyfriend come in and living with you. And by the time you turn your back, trouble. Is the church with me? Yeah, 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 yeah. 93% of the perpetrators are people who the child is very much familiar with. And that's one of the reasons why most of them don't say anything, because they are scared. Yeah, so so, so be, be very careful. That's why Jesus calls for the children. Jesus says to them, let, come and let me read, let the little children, what? Come to me and do not forbid them for such is the kingdom of God. Let them come, however they look. Let them come and forbid them not. Meaning, don't stand in their way. I'll give you the background. The background to this text. Everybody know this text, but you don't know the background. The background to this text is Jesus was having a meeting, preaching, preaching, preaching. And in the middle of the, pre the sermon, some mothers... A group of mothers came with their little ones for Jesus to bless them. And when the disciples saw the mothers, they stopped the mothers and said, Oh, you can't disturb Jesus right now. Wait until he finish. Huh, so like, so like some elders I know. You can't, you can't disturb Jesus right now. Wait, sit down down there, wait to, wait to the back until Jesus finish. And while Jesus was preaching, he saw the commotion. And realized what was happening. And he said to the disciples, hey, don't do that. Allow these little children to do what? Come unto me and do not forbid them for such is the. So he stopped his preaching and blessed the babies because he puts children first. That's why God is upset 
when parents stand in the way of their children who want to give their heart to him. Oh, my child, not ready. You're not God. Only God determined that. Is the church with me? Only the child belongs to God. It is his, the child is a heritage from the Lord. For such is the kingdom of heaven. Hear, hear me when I tell you this. Fasten your seatbelt. It's a long time Satan has been after the children. From the day, watch me, folks, from the day Jesus, um, watch me, from the day God said, be fruitful and from that word, those words came out of God's mouth. Satan has been after children. In, in Genesis 4 verse 8, we told you the other day that the first child that Eve gave birth to, Satan controlled that one. You remember that? The second child Eve gave birth to, Satan would love to control that, but he didn't get the chance to, so he killed that one. It's a long time Satan has been trying to kill children. Long time, long time. Down in Egypt, hey, stay with the preacher. Down in Egypt, when the Hebrews were multiplying, the Bible says a new Pharaoh came in town, didn't like the idea that the Hebrews were multiplying, and guess what was his plan to get rid of the multiplication of the Hebrew? Kill little children. Read with me. I'm in Exodus 1 verse 15. Then Pharaoh, king of Egypt, instruct the Hebrew wives, and we have their names, Sipra and Pua, to do what? To kill all Hebrew boys. At when? Does that sound familiar to you? As soon as they were born. Oh, by the way, shh, 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 shh. that was before abortion came into existence. They used to kill baby when? No, you're not with me. Let me talk to these people up here. So, those people over here, they're sleeping. They're sleeping. Let me, let me talk to them. That was before abortion came into existence. When, when did they used to kill baby before abortion? As soon as they are born. Okay, now that we have abortion, let me see if these people wake up down here. Now that they have abortion, what time they kill baby now? Bef now you wake up. Now you wake up. In Egypt, there was no abortion. Is the church with me? Yes. So Satan's attempt was to kill the babies as soon as they were born. Yes. So, they, so, so they, the, king, uh, the king ordered these midwives to kill the babies. But, read verse 17. But the, hey, read with me. But the midwives, what? Fear God and didn't obey the king. Can the church say Amen. Because when you fear God, you can't kill baby. When you fear God, you can't kill children, born or unborn. Is the church with me? Yes, they fear God and obeyed not the king. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people to, th when they realized that the babies were still being born, he commanded all to throw the newborn Hebrew boys where? Into the river. But the girls. You know, when you check it out, we men have some rough time. Life seems to be harder for us. See, oh Lord. If there's a woman and a man to die, and, a man, and the killer only has one shot in his gun, who do you think he's going to kill? I wonder why. Boy, Pastor Moses, life rough. <laughs> Allow the girls to live. And they throw all the boys. That's how, that's how Moses ended up in River Nile. Is the church with me? Yes, yes, yes. But, but hey, Satan in Egypt was not the only attempt. Here's another attempt. King Herod tried it too. A long time they're trying to kill babies, you know. King Herod tried it. You remember this one? In Matthew 2 verse 16, when Jesus was born, the text says, Herod was furious when he learned from the astro astrologers or the wise men, your translation, had disobeyed him. So he sent soldiers to Bethlehem and ordered them to do what? Kill every 
baby boy again. Two years and what? Under. And the soldiers went and they killed every baby boy two years. It's a long time Satan has been trying to kill babies. From the day Jesus says, multiply and replenish the earth, Satan has a target on babies. Verse 7, then was fulfilled what was spoken by Jeremiah the prophet saying, a voice was heard in Ramah, lamentation, weeping and great mourning. Rachel weeping for her. That, listen, they don't tell you about this in Christmas. You know, come to think of it, I've never seen a Christmas card with the killing of babies. Have you ever? And it's part of the Christmas story. When the wise man didn't come back to, to, to King Herod, he sent out the order to kill all baby boys. When you listen to the town of Jerusalem, there were mothers crying, crying. Every house that had a child with two years and under, you could hear the mothers weeping. You could know which house the soldiers are in based on the screams from the mothers. Bloodshed. And yet still, during Christmas time, we don't hear a word. Satan continues, continues his bloody campaign against children. Stay with the preacher. Ha! This is serious stuff. So before abortion, they used to kill the children when? As soon as they were born. In 1973, United States Supreme Court rule on this case called Way, Roe versus Wade. And in that landmark case in the United States of America, the US Supreme Court says a woman has a constitutional right to kill any unborn baby she wishes to kill. Now, the United States started in 1776. And for all that period of time, it was not legal until 1973. The court says the abortion is constitutionally protected. In other words, you have a right to kill. No, you didn't get that, Bridget. Women have a right. You didn't get that. You didn't get it. Hey, hey, if a woman kills her unborn baby, you have a right to do so. Hang on, hang on, hang on, because you still don't get it. And so as a result of that, abortion became a big issue in the United States, right? It's one of the biggest subjects right now. The last election was won um, by the Democrats basically on the same subject. And women are champion. People are jumping up. Yeah. We get the right to kill. Yeah, yeah. We have the right to kill. It is my body. My choice. I can get pregnant as many times as I want and kill as many as I want. I have a right to kill. And the world have not yet put the two things together to realize this has been the campaign of Satan. It only changes from Old Testament to New Testament. Are we together? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so let me give you some facts. Now, how many children have they killed since 1973 when that abortion issue, when that abortion case came up? January 22nd, 1973. Do you know how many uh, unborn children have been murdered? Innocent life taken since that ruling. Here's it. Are you ready for it? Are you ready for it? Here's it. 63 million 459,781. Sixty-three million. Let that, just let that soak in your consciousness. Sixty-three what? 
million. And the news continues. This is 2022. Over 63 million abortions have occurred in the U.S. since, since that case, Roe vs. Wade decision in 1973. Uh, and, and by the way, here's the, here's the other headline. America saw, America saw more than one million abortions each year between 1975 and 2012. One million each year. Killing children left, right, and center. From the day God says, be fruitful and multiply, Satan wants to destroy. The campaign to kill babies intensifies. Here is, this is the President Joe Biden in his recent election when he came to office stated Biden uh, to ask, said he planned to ask Congress to codify Rovers Wade abortion rights protection if the Democrat keeps the House and the Senate. What does that mean? Well, this ruling was, was made by the Supreme Court. It's an interpretation of their constitution. Brother, Sir Biden says, I just don't want a court ruling. I want to make it into a law. So that no court can change it. Is the church with me? Yes, yes, yes. And people were excited. People leave, take time off from work to come celebrate the victory. This is the stage to which we have come. This is the stage to which we have come. One of the biggest, single, most, what I would call killing machine is what is known as, a, a company known as Planned Parenthood. So the PBS Hour gave, gave, put out this headline, US, hey watch this, US abortions rose in 2020 with about, look at this, with about one in every five pregnancy end up in abortion. Did you get that? One in every five. Now you understand why I am speaking on the subject tonight. One in every five. The report from the Guttermacher's Institute, a research group that supports abortion rights, counted more than 930,000 abortions in the U.S. in 2020. And that is up from 862,000. So it's going up. So I come to Jamaica. How about Jamaica? The same... The same company that did the research in the U.S. also do a research in Jamaica. What, what is interesting, it, what, what is very interesting is that they have what is called unintended pregnancy and abortion. Unintended pregnancy, what does that mean? You never planned for it. It's an accident. <laughs> oh man, unintended. Unintended, never want one, never plan one, and don't want one. Are we together? Yes. But there's some good news. There's some good news. In 1990 to 1994, there were 121,000 unintended pregnancy. But over the years, it has been falling. And I say, praise God for that. Are we together? However, however, the, the abortion rates is almost the same. Abortion rates don't change that much. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some more figures. Hear this. Hear this. In Jamaica, in 2015 to 2019, there were a total of 89,000 pregnancies. 89,000 each year. Of these, of these 89,000, 68,000 were unintended. Did you get that? Yeah, 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 yeah. In other words, watch me, watch me. Of all the pregnancies in Jamaica... 76% of it were unintended. Holy moly. Let me repeat that for you. Of all the pregnancies that happened in Jamaica, the whole, this whole piece here, 76%, three quarter of all the pregnancies in Jamaica 
were unintended, unwanted, didn't want it, never planned for. Is the church with me? Become a burden to people. Seventy-six percent, which means, which means only this little piece, twenty-five percent, people actually planned for and wanted. So, so based on this figure, based on this figure, it is fair to say most of Jamaican picnic, nobody know what. You understand what I'm saying here? Based on this figure, based on the figure here, unintended, never planned for. So people struggle with them. And by the way, and of this 76 percent, here's what: 44 percent of that ended in abortion. So the number of abortion, watch this, of these 68,000 pregnancies that were unintended, 29,800 of those were aborted in Jamaica. 29,800. Watch me, watch me. In a country where abortion is not permitted, The most stunning, for me, the most stunning piece is this one. So, so what am I saying then? What Satan can kill after birth, he will kill before birth. Is the church with me? Doesn't matter what time you kill them. You still kill them. And now, what he, those that he can physically kill, he goes for their minds. Oh, Lord Jesus. I tell you, there's a battle for children. If you know what parents are going, are putting up with nowadays, uh, parents are just stunned by the things that these children are now thinking and saying and doing, going for their minds. So let me share some stuff with you. Let me, share, let me share some stuff with you. Let me share some stuff with you. So this was, are you ready for this? You sure you're ready? So this was a, supposed to be a Mother's Day card. But if you look good, you will not see the word mother on it. Are you there? Yes, because there's a strong movement now to replace any gender-specific terminologies to non-gender-specific. Are, are you with me? Right. So no longer can you say, Happy Mother's Day. You have to say, Happy Birthing, per birthing Person's Day. And the argument they're saying is that it's not only women can be pregnant. I don't know where they get that biology or theology from. But in their crooked mind, messed up mind, warped mind, somebody has it that men can also be pregnant. Well, when I check my Bible, that's a virtual impossibility. Because the Bible says God made them male and female. That sounds like binary to me. And nobody has the right, amen, to improve on what God make. When God makes something, you can't improve on it. Is the church with me? You can't make it better than what God make it. So anybody who's trying to improve and to twist and to modify and to arrange, hey, hey, you're pushing your finger in God's face. If you think that's bad, if you think that's bad, if you think that's bad, here's, what, here's what's happening. COVID-19 was a blessing to a lot of people. 
the, 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 the news media only show you the curse. But there's a lot of blessing. Amen. We talked about one last night. Amen. Churches went online. Here's another blessing. During COVID-19, when schools were locked down, children started to learn online. You with me? And it's for the first time their mama and papa were able to get a, get an idea of what they were learning. Mm-hmm. Because normally, parents just drop them off at of school. Bye, baby. See you later. Go on to work and pick them back up. And you leave them under the care of a teacher who's supposed to be. Who's supposed to be teaching them maths and English. I would together and values of life. Well, during COVID, when parents started to study with their kids and see the lesson, they, they were shocked at some of the things that their little six-year-old were learning. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so here's what some of the stuff. See, they, they, a headline came out that says, sexual liberation was now in what? Public schools. Yes, 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 yes. Big argument, big argument. Los Angeles Unified School District adopts a radical trans-affirming program. In other words, they were teaching these young five and six-year-olds about changing their genders. And if you're not happy with being a boy, you can be a girl if you want to. And if you're not happy with being a girl, you can be a boy if you want to. And teaching that nobody's really boy or girl. You are in a continuum. Messing up the little children's mind. And that's one. that was not only Los Angeles, Pennsylvania Department of Education website lists gender neutral pronoun. Gender neutral pronoun. Pronoun is either he or she or him or her. But now they have added Z and she. <laughs> so if you're not a boy or a girl, you're a Z or a she. What kind of rubbish is this? And that is what being taught to the little kindergarten children. Los Angeles School District is encouraging. Watch this. Is it, the school district was encouraging. Is the church with me? Five-year-old to experiment with gender pronouns while also pushing trans-affirming gender, including making their classroom queer all year round. So all the decorations and the object lesson that a teacher would put in a classroom, tree and cow and mouse and rat. No, what they put there is queer stuff. Homosexuals and lesbians and all kind of queer stuff orientating their mind. Portland Public School are teaching sexually explicit, mat sexually explicit material to who? kindergarten these are hey and first graders about queer theory people who are queer you didn't send your child to school to learn about queer and by the way it's in the u.s and it may be coming here very shortly because when the u.s sneeze we catch coal so it's not far from here San Diego School District curriculum, it's another city, takes cues from Planned Parenthood and teaches young children to, quote, explore gender identities like non-binary and pansexual and two-spirit. I don't even know what two-spirit is. But these are, these are the stuff that parents discover that their little children were learning. Is the church with me? Yes. Satan was secretly behind the scene, formulating their mind, controlling their mind. No longer, by the time they reach 13, they start to dress in a certain way. You wonder, where this person, where my child get this stuff from? Hey, hey, here's one, here's one. Here's one piece of flyer that went out that teaches them the difference between bisexual and pansexual. I never heard pansexual before. I had to go look for it, look it up. 
bisexual. Hey, you, you can have you can have affection for uh, the opposite sex or another sex, um, but pansexual, you can have affection for every sex all at the same time. Attraction occurs regardless of gender. So some some person, one person can attracted can be attracted to man and the same person attracted to woman and the same person attracted I don't know if beast and animal inside of this thing but this is the age to which the children are come when I was in school none of that garbage was in school is the church with me Satan is on a campaign to steal the mind of your children give them to God Say, and by the way, by the way, let me, let me wrap up. I, I, I promised myself say, I won't preach tonight. You know, but, but so let me keep myself quiet. But it's not just the little one Satan is after. He's after the teens too. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play, I'm going to play something for you. Um, I'm going to ask the control room to have this queue up for me. I'm going to play something for you. This is from Planned Parenthood. So let me, ex let me explain it while the, while the team line up that video for you. Planned Parenthood is that organization in the, organization in the U.S. paid by U.S. taxpayers. They facilitate most, if not all, the abortions in the state. Listen to me carefully. So they, Doc, good to see you. They put out they put out this promotional video. Stay with the preacher. What is this video about? This video was to inform teenagers, stay with the preacher, to inform teenagers that you can slow down the progression of your development, your puberty development. Is you still with me? Yeah, when children are 10, 11, 12, 13, they're in that stage where puberty is taking over. Is the church still with me? So your testosterone for male and your estrogen for female come, starts to manipulate your body and you start to produce different parts of your body that are identified with different genders. So what this, what this video says to teenagers, hey, teenagers, you can stop the production of your puberty, puberty development, you can block your puberty, you can block your puberty, you can put a freeze on that stage of your development. For what? Well, until you get older and old enough to decide whether you want to be a boy or a girl. Can I repeat that for you? So this, this is a promotion that they put out to teenagers to say, the natural development of your body, you can put a break on it, will give you some time for you to decide whether you want to be a boy or a girl. Which means, if you were born a boy, you don't have to remain a boy. We can stop your puberty. And then when you decide which you want to go, we can do some stuff to change you over. Uh, let, me let me play this video and see if the team, I hope they have the audio. No audio. Guys, can we get the audio? Guys, guys in the control room, can we get the audio? No audio. Can somebody help me? Help! Still not hearing anybody. All right, they're working on it. They're working on it. 
I did send them in advance to get this thing sorted out so that we don't have any. Yeah, but we don't have any audio. We don't have any audio. We need audio? Still no audio. Still no audio. All right, for those of you watching online, they're working on it. Um, but you need to get the audio on this one. Okay. All right, still not getting any audio. Not sure what's going on. Anyway, if you guys can't get it, we just have to leave it. I really wanted you to hear it. Huh? Yeah, man. Okay. Um, Still nothing. Okay, um, they're having some technical problems with the, with the audio. I'm sorry about that. I did give them the heads up before, so not sure what happened. Um, but the point, I'm, I, the point I'm trying to make here is for you to understand what Satan is trying to do in trying to destroy the minds of our young people. So this, this particular um, video was a promo, promotion that they sent, and there was another one behind it, asking teenagers to be careful that they don't have to go into puberty. They can block their puberty. They can take medication, what is called puberty blockers. So it stopped them from developing breasts as girls and stopped them from developing certain other features as men and stall their puberty until they decide. Who decides whether you're a male or a female? You don't decide that. That is God's decision. A man is trying to become God. And that's why Jesus calls for the children. Help me read again. Jesus says, let the what? Let the children come unto me and do not forbid them for such is the kingdom of heaven. Let them come, don't stop them. In Sodom, in Sodom, in Sodom, just before the fire came, two angels landed in Sodom. When they were about to destroy Sodom, they said, they said to, to Lot, Lot, do you have anybody else here? Meaning, we are going to burn up the city, but if you have children, we are willing to save them. Do you have anybody else here? Lot had two daughters downtown. He went for them. Is the church with me? They didn't come with him, so, so they died. The only two daughters were at the house. They, were, they escaped with Lot. But the point is that God was intended to save the rest of the family. That was not only in Lot. In Noah's days, same thing, same thing is nowadays. In the flood, the Lord said to Noah, Noah, come into the ark. Who and who and who? There's no one size. You and, your, and all your household. Why? Because I have seen that you are righteous. So God is willing to save both mother and father and children. That's why we call you to give your heart to the Lord. That is why we call you. That's why we call the children. Jesus says, suffer them to come unto me and forbid them not. If God bless you with a child, you have a responsibility to ensure that they grow up in the church of God, that they give their heart to the church. Of, is the church with me? Because they are God's children. And by the way, the best place for your children to grow is in the church, whether they're good or bad. 
I got baptized at 12. You too. Amen. How many of you got baptized as children? You were, you were just a child when you got baptized. Look at that. Oh my goodness. This evening, a number of children are getting baptized. I'm going to ask you to come. All of you guys getting baptized, come. Come. Amen. 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 Come around. Come around. Praise the Lord. I told you the other night when I searched the records of the, of the flood in Noah's days, there was not a single child that was saved. Not a single one was saved. And I started to ask myself the question, how many children were alive when the flood came? And I couldn't come up with a figure, except, except I remember people used to live for 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 years, and they were still having children. So I suspect there must be a whole lot of children. Come with me. Come with me. The flood came. The ark rode out the flood. Outside in the high waters are the floating, bloated, swollen bodies of parents and children. If you are in the ark, Hey, hey, stay with me. If you're in the ark and through a little crack, you peep outside, you'd have seen dogs swollen with their foot high, goats, cows, donkeys, all kind of animals, along with grandma, grandpa, mom, dad, neighbors, school teacher, everybody. Because their bloated body floating on the water, there was no distinction between animals and men. They were all carcasses. Little children, kindergarten, primary, high school children are all dead. And you know why they're dead? Because of their parents. Because of their parents. I checked Sodom. There must be a lot of children down in Sodom before God rained down the fire. But you know, this angels went into Sodom and he did not take out the little children. He went to Sodom for one righteous family. Is the church with me? And the children perish in the flame because of their parents. So tonight, I want heaven to record that I'm making this call. I want heaven to recall I'm making this call. If you have children that God has blessed you with who have not yet given their hearts to the Lord as long as they're old enough to know right from wrong bring them come tonight get them baptized in Jesus name is there any parent down there is there any parent down there who has a child not yet give your heart to the Lord in baptism. You want to say, preacher, in the name of Jesus, I want to surrender my little one to the Lord. Is there any parent down there? God bless you. I see that parent. God bless you. Is there anybody else? Any parent down there who has a child old enough to tell right from wrong? You want to say, preacher, I would like to surrender my child in God's hand. Put them in God's hand. Is there anybody else? I see that hand. Can I ask you to come up with your child? Come up with your child. Come up with your child. Come up with your child. 
Come up with your child. Come with your child. Come with your child. Says, Preacher, in the name of Jesus. Can I get a children's song? Where's my praise and worship team? There, one. God bless you. Come with your child. Oh, weak, but I'm strong. God bless you. Come with your child. God bless you. Come with your child. Where's my praise and worship team? They disappear. When he cometh, when he cometh, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Bring, bring the children to the Lord. Is there another? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God, you give me this child. I'm giving back to you. God bless you. God bless you. You give me this child. God bless you. You give me this child. I'm giving back to you. Is there anybody else? Is there anybody else? Give me this child. I'm giving back to you. I'm going to finish shortly. But can I share this with you? I was at a campaign. It was, it was 2014 Hero Circle in Kingston when we did this campaign. And somebody came to me and said, Pastor, I have a question. I have a question. Okay, what's the question? He says, Pastor, what, what is the age limit for them to be baptized? Good question. What's, what, what is the age limit? How do you know they're not too young? What's the age limit? And I said to the person, What age does hell take them? The same age hell take them, heaven take them too. Amen. And, and they're not Satan's children, they're God's children. God has no age limit. Come, if God, if the Lord bless you with a child, you may be growing the child, maybe you're the grandma or grandpa under your care. Give your child, give that child to God. It's the best thing you could ever do. Is there any other? As we think the next stanza, is there any other? Final call. Is there any other? Is there any other? Is there any other? Any other? All the pure ones, all the bright ones, is the best. Tonight, we're handing them over to the like Lord in baptism. The stars of the morning, his bright brow adorning. They, they shall shine in their beauty, bright gems for. But you know, we think children don't have no sense. But even babies have sense, you know. My wife is here, she can tell you. So when my daughter was just a little tiny something, you know when they are two year old and, and they are missing? When they are two and they are missing and get quiet, you know something is going on. Our two-year-old, quiet, quiet, can't find her. Where she? Can't find her, can't find her, can't find her, can't find her. So we search and can't find her. Well, we look underneath the bed. She had the Vaseline bottle. Plastered the whole self underneath the bed with the Vaseline bottle. No. Somehow she knew what she was doing was wrong. That's why she went hiding. <laughs> God has put enough brain in these children to know right from wrong. And parents, you're doing the right thing today. God bless you. You're giving to God the gift that he gave to you. Can you give the parents a round of applause, Virgin? Best thing ever. Best thing ever. I'm going to ask, I don't know which of the pastors, who's going to do the vows for us? Which of the pastors doing the vows? We will want to, if the parents, parents, if you are here, 
for these children. Come on up if you are here. If your child is here, parents, come up and give them some support. The parents of these children who are here, come on up and give them some support. I'm going to ask the pastors who are doing the pastors who are doing the vows to come forward. Come on up and give your parents some support. Amen. 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 This is their second birth. Come on up and give your parents, your child, some support. Praise the Lord. You ready? Jesus falling in love with Jesus yes good song falling in love falling in love with Jesus with Jesus it's the best thing was the best thing I've ever Amen. ever done isn't it so beautiful? Sing that one more time. I'm falling Lord, in love. I'm falling, falling in love. Falling in love. Yes, sir. With you. support their little ones with a beautiful picture beautiful picture i hope when the saints go marching all of you will be in the number amen evangelist smith is with me and he's going to take us through we have a children's version of the baptismal vow we have one and two adults who are parents of the children who want to join them and we'll give them that opportunity pastor smith let's take them through the children's version of the baptismal vow amen amen the, my favorite Bible text is where it shall a young man or a young lady cleanse his or her ways but by taking heed to the word of God. Tonight we are very happy for our children and everyone who has come to take heed to the word of God. I have broken the vows down. There are about, about 14 of them. I'm going to ask you five simple questions from the children's vow. It is friendly for everybody. So if you're an adult, all you have to do is to raise your hand. Is that all right? You're not talking to me. When I ask you the question, you raise your hand. It's five of them. Amen. Number one, do you believe in God the Father, in his Son Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Spirit? And do you believe that they have always existed and that there will be no time when they will not exist? Do you believe that? Amen. Can I hear the church say amen? amen? The second one says, Do you accept that the death of Jesus Christ on the cross saved you from your sins? That he was resurrected from the grave and that he is now interceding for you and is preparing a special home for you. Do you believe that? Praise the Lord. Number three says, do you believe that God gave you his words as the most important textbook in the world? He gave you his word to discover God's, that God is loving, he is fair, and his words are given to guide you to be more like Jesus. Amen. Can I hear you say amen? amen? 
listen to the next one very carefully. Do you, do you choose to be baptized as Jesus was to announce your decision to love and obey God forever by accepting what he has chosen for you just as you accept the mission of telling the message of Jesus soon coming to, the, to your friends and to your neighbors. Amen. Can I hear the church say amen? amen? And the final one, the final one, the last one, listen very carefully. Have you chosen to become a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church? And do you believe that it is God's remnant church, a church that has the message given by God to proclaim to all the inhabitants of the world? And do you desire to be baptized as a public expression of your belief in Jesus Christ. Can I hear the church say amen? amen. Can I hear the church say praise the, Lord? praise the Lord? Speaking to the members of the church, you have seen the children and the adults, sorry, raising their hand. They want to go all the way with their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Will somebody therefore make a motion that we baptize these persons based upon the profession of their faith and their belief in the soon coming of their Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? I so move. You're moving, you're moving the motion? Oh, okay. Somebody need to second the motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay, it is carried. Amen. The Lord bless you. So, uh, just before we get into the baptism, we have the president of the Northern Caribbean University here with us, Dr. Lincoln Edwards, traveling all the way from Mandeville just to be with us. And at this time, just before we get into the baptism, we will have greetings from him at this moment. Dr. Lincoln Edwards. Thank you. Yes, good night again. Good night. It is exciting to see so many children here giving their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. And I bring you greetings from Northern Caribbean University, your university. And when I see the children standing here, I'm happy. Because when they are baptized, they are not just baptized to be left alone. There is a developmental process. And after baptism, they need to be placed in our schools because they are learning to be soldiers of the cross. And soldiers need to be trained. And the training takes place at home, in the church, and where else? In the schools. And that is why the church has set up a system, preparatory school, primary school, and then a preparatory high school, and eventually, when they are ready for tertiary education, we have one tertiary university in Jamaica owned by the Adventist Church, and that is the Northern Caribbean University. So, when they are ready and they have passed through the system, they make their final stop at NCU. And when we hand them that diploma, we are saying you are ready now to go out into the world to be a soldier of the cross and to help finish this work so that Jesus can come and put an end to the madness that the preacher revealed here tonight. So thank you for sending your children to Jesus early. And those of your youngsters who are at home who are ready for NCU or our other schools, send them to our schools. That's where they get protected. That's where they get shielded. That's where they learn to be wise to discern evil and strong to resist it. So God bless you for doing the right thing. 
And preacher, thank you so much for the word of God. May God continue to bless you and pray for our children continually and for our schools. Amen. Thank you much. Thank you very much, Jack. So we're moving to the baptismal pool right here. The pastor is already in the water. Want everybody to stay for this is the best part of the service. And then I'll catch you up on Friday night. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Until then, we meet on Friday night. Let's, church is not dismissed until the last person is baptized. So let's, let's go over to the baptismal pool. I need to pray for that. While they're going, I'm just going to ask you to stop where they are. Just stop. We need to pray. We have to pray. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, you have said in your word that a little child shall lead them. Tonight, Heavenly Father, we are grateful for these young ones, these young children who have come to go all the way with you. You say, suffer the little children to come unto me and do not stop them, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. We ask that as they bury the old man tonight, that they will rise to walk in newness of life with the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They will grow up knowing that they are special because it belongs to you. And we pray when it's all over, they, along with their parents and with all of us, will make heaven their home, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The praise team will lead us into some songs just before. And we are allowing, we are allowing the, the parents, if we could just, if we just have the rest of candidates sit, if you could just have the candidates sit, please. Uh, the deacons will come. The parents will be able to come with them, but we're taking them four at a time so the others can just remain seated until we are ready for you. All right? Uh, listen, Bible workers, please get the candidates seated. We only can take four in the pool at any one time. Only four in the pool at any one time. I decided to follow Jesus. I Oh, 
Brother and sister, in the waters we have four little ones who have decided to give their life to the Lord. And so our little brother and sisters, based on the profession of your faith, as ministers of the gospel, we will now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the blessed Holy Spirit. Shall God's church say amen. Amen. Oh, what a wonderful thing. A very wonderful thing to be free from sin and a prize within to be made as joint is with Jesus my Lord. What a wonderful, wonderful thing. I can't hear you say, oh, what a wonderful thing. A very happy for these four persons, young persons, who want to ensure that they are signed up for the Christian Jubilee. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, based upon the profession of your faith, you believe in Jesus Christ as your only Savior from sin. We as ministers of the gospel will now baptize you all in the name of the Father, in the name of his dear son, Jesus Christ, and in the name of the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. The water is troubled, my friend. Step right in. God's mighty power is moving every hour. Power is moving every 
are the two young brothers, two young sisters, and they are smiling away because they know where they're going. They know that they're making the way to the heavenly kingdom. And so are their brothers and sisters. Based on the profession of your faith, as ministers of the gospel, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the blessed Holy Spirit. Let's God's people shout, Hallelujah! I know where I am going. I know. Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, based upon the profession of your faith, you believe in Jesus Christ as your only Savior from sin. We will now baptize you all in the name of the Father, in the name of his dear Son, Jesus Christ, and in the name of the Holy Ghost, the Comforter, let the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Closer than a brother, my Jesus is to me. If I dare express, is everything I need.
the versions in school. When these four young ladies are singing in devotion, they'll say, a magnet, a magnet. They have felt the Holy Ghost power in their life. And they have decided to move with the Holy Ghost tonight. And so are dear sisters, based on the profession of your faith, as ministers of the gospel, as you smile this evening, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the blessed Holy Spirit. Shall God's church shout, Amen. amen. We shall have a new name in that land, yeah. in that land, that sunny, sunny land. We, we shall have a new name in that land, in that sunny land. New name, precious name, in that sunny land. New name, precious name, in that sunny land. We shall have a new name. That's quite an appropriate song. Whether you're ready or not, Jesus is coming again. This is the final week of our campaign, the final Wednesday night. And since we started, this is, has been our message to prepare Port Moore for the second coming of Christ. We have the last four candidates in the pool this evening. It would be remiss of me if I did not take, make the last call. I don't know if there's anybody else here who have not yet done so. If you have another child, you have not yet given your heart to the Lord, and you'd like at this moment to say, Pastor, God bless me with this child, and I really want to give this child into the hands of God. Your final call to do so right now, final opportunity. Is there anybody like that? Last call, last call, okay, we'll close the meeting, we can't keep you any longer, we'll close the meeting. Now my dear friends, because you've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal savior from sin, as ministers of the gospel upon the authority of God's word, we now baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of his Son, in the name of the sweet Holy Spirit, let the church say... What can wash away? 